great Sunday morning. I hope that this day finds you blessed and highly favored as usual. But all of us are concerned. We should be very concerned enough, just enough though, that our fear turns to faith and it drives us to our knees. One of the things that uh, we are very curious about is this coronavirus and what uh, what the Lord's intention and his plans is for it. So today, I hope that I can kind of shed some light on some things uh, that from the heart of God and from the throne room that we do know that indeed something is definitely going on all over the world. And it is changing and shifting everything that we know as normal. It is changing and causing us great concern, but just enough so that uh, we should indeed turn our attention to our Lord and Savior. You know, I, I put something out uh, yesterday. I hope that you saw it. It was about I can only imagine how great he is. And when we think about how great God is and all of his magnificence, then all is all else means nothing if we just keep our mind on Jesus because you know he said that he said it in the, in his word he said if you can keep your mind on him he is able to keep you in perfect peace right now I pray that the peace of God hits you the type that will transform you that touches you from the top of your head and goes to the soles of your feet and causes you to shout and dance because don't wait until the battle is over shout now you know we're about to have a great time in the Lord so stay tuned to the following message I hope you have a great Sunday now I want to speak to you about uh, a particular subject that and we're doing a watch party today so even though the message ain't live, we're all live, and we're trying to do something entirely um, unusual that will inspire you. One of the things that does is inspires me. Now, I don't know everything about the coronavirus, but I do know a few spiritual things. So we're live at the watch party so that we can ask questions about some of the things that I'm going to be teaching. Now listen, the coronavirus or the COVID-19 COVID as they're calling it, is not only sweeping the nations, but it's destroying lives, threatening our way of life, the economic flow of the world, our health, and changing the future of the world. But let me encourage you right here. Our ladder will be better than our former. Better days are ahead. They are coming. I don't care what it looks like. God is still on the throne and no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Our discussion today is reaping and sowing. Isn't that an interesting topic? What we have sown will come to pass. Be it good or bad. And I've got to talk to you realistically this morning because what people don't understand that the law of sowing and reaping cannot be disregarded. We are constantly doing things that think that there are no consequences, but there are consequences for our actions to every seed that has been sown, something's going to come up in its place. Let me tell you, if you sow grass seed, don't expect to get corn. If you sow bad things, don't expect to get good things. But sometimes the confusion comes when people begin to sow those bad things and they still see good things happen around them 
They may just be reaping from a time when they sowed good things. But those bad things that you're sowing are coming up. So what do we do that and how do we handle that? We stop right now. Today is your day of discovery. Today is your day of repentance. And today is the time that you begin to change. That you begin to say, today. It stops. I begin to sow good things. I don't care what my neighbor is doing. I don't care what someone else is doing. But I know that if I want that law of sowing and reaping to come up in my life as blessed, that it's going to have to look different. We are in the process of God changing many things in the world. Our latter may be greater than our former. It will be. Hallelujah. Let's begin with the certainty of reaping. Psalm 126, verses 5 and 6, and I read, Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Now let's pray over this message and let's pray over the nations. Let's pray over our families. Let's pray over our neighbors and our and individuals that are much like us who are going through various things and very weighty things. Even those in the hospitals, in the nursing homes, people that you may not know but someone that you that are is affected by the coronavirus. I thank God for all of you that you're in good health that are listening to me this morning. But I also want to pray for those who may be listening who for some reason they were able to hear this message. So this morning I pray for you wherever you are. I pray for you. I plead the blood of Jesus over you. And I decree a healing, a victory over coronavirus over your body. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, be made whole according to Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you right now, Father, that you touch everyone that is listening. Father, everyone who may have someone that is sick, or even those who are in good health this morning, Thank you, and I praise you right now, Father, that we are making it through, that we are coming over on the other side. I thank you this morning for the Christ Family Church members, that all of them are healthy and in good health. Father, we do give you praise. Father, I thank you right now. Lord God, I briefly speak over this coronavirus, and I command it right now in Jesus' name to be no more. Father, I thank you. Father, we pray over our neighbors and those in hospitals, those in the health care systems, those who are administering the care of God to those. Oh, Lord God, who are sick and shut in, those in the nursing homes, Lord God, who were caught by surprise by a, a vicious virus. Oh, God, I thank you right now, Father, for those souls in the world. Oh, Lord God, let everyone be captivated and recaptured by your great love. Father, I thank you right now as we as we go forward in today's message, Lord, Lord God, I pray that we that we press in all the more to your heavenly grace. Father, we do give you praise. You know, I want to speak to you about this uh, crisis that's going on in the United States and around the world. The entire world is suffering. The entire Christian community by now should be praying for God's mercy upon not only the United States, but all the nations. We should pray uh, that God will be done, that his grace is sufficient and his mercy endures forever. If you would read with me in, in the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verses uh, and verse 9, says, And let us not grow weary it while doing good, for in due season... We shall reap if we do not lose heart. It is not time to lose heart. 
but to hold on to our faith. Let me encourage you, press in more to God, not away from him. Refuse fear in every way. Replace those fearful moments with a trust in the almighty God. Again, faith, not fear. Trusting in him. Going into those secret places, into your prayer closets. Finding that faith to encourage someone else to stand. To refuse to speak for doubt and unbelief. It is so easy to lose sight of your faith when so much is calling out for your attention. The attention of the media madness, the doubters and unbelievers, no matter how they package it, God will not fail you. So be in carriage. Let me, let me for a moment, stay with me while I turn this sheet. But I tell you, um, have you heard this reaping? where others have sown and across, all across the world we look at things that are going on and we say you know well, what have I done many are saying how did we get here what is really going on in the book of John and St. John chapter 4 verses 35 and 38 the Bible says in the New King James Version do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. God has a plan, and his plan is to harvest all those that belong to him. It is not time to continue in your life the way you knew it. It is time to draw close to the one who poured out his blood for you. I think that the timing is perfect. When many of us are about to celebrate the Passover for some, uh, the Resurrection Day for others, Easter for even others, whatever, whichever day and time it is that you are celebrating, it is the harvest of souls that are white. Those, all those calling all to all who belong to Christ, calling forth to you right now in the name of Jesus to transform, to come not and be not conformed to the world. The Bible says in John 4 verse 36, and he who reaps receives wages gathers fruit for eternal life. It is so good to see so many that are in the body of Christ who represents themselves as leadership going forth into the harvest, reaping those who should have eternal life. That the Bible says, but this is the saying is true. One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap for which you have not labored. Everybody underline that. For which you have not labored. Others have labored. Underline that. And you have entered into their labors. And yeah, I'm going to read on. But uh, I want to say this. And I will say it again later in this message. But as one that sows. And one who who reaps but there is God who gives the increase 1 Corinthians 3 5 through 9 says talks about this talks about watering working and warning who then is Paul who is Apollos but ministers to whom you believe as the Lord gave to each one I, I planted Apollos water but God gave the increase. That's what I was just quoting. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters. So don't get that twisted. But it is God who will give the increase. God will cause the increase to come forth from whatever he does, for whether it looks like it may be bad, it may be something that we do 
we we are not wanting to participate in. So, hey, if God would have told us this was coming, what would have happened? Many knew that something was coming, but exactly what we did not know. Now he who plants and who who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. What am I saying? Good to work. Go to work. Don't let fear stop you from the will of God. Stop sowing discord. Stop sowing fear. For we are God's fellow workers and you are God's field. You are God's building. Don't ever forget it. I don't know about you, but I don't mind reaping where others have sown as long as it's good things. But when it is the bad things, like in the midst of the virus, that could affect anyone, we could have been, we could be reaping where others have sown, but we never think of that in our life. We think that, oh, if it's going good, I must have sown good things. If it's going bad, I may have sown bad things, but not always. Because for sure, this thing affects the whole world. So we have all sown. So we all reap in the world. Everyone, each of us, no one can escape, has sown lots of bad things in this nation. Whether you're holy at this point, there may have been a point in your your life, and I'm sure it was, when you were not as holy. Depends on who you are, where you are, what region you're in, how you were brought up, whether you were privileged, non-privileged, rich, poor, wicked, saintly. Lots of things have been done and many are still sowing where they think there will be no consequences. Do you know how many people are listening to this message today with a heavy heart? There are many that are listening who are thinking, this will never happen to me. There are others who are listening who thinks she ain't talking to me. But God is not blind. And he sees all that we do and makes record of it. These sins of a dark era that we have lived in always end in devastations, destruction, disease, despair. Because God is saying, I'm going to get your attention. I'm going to shake you. I'm going to rock you. I'm going to shift you. Because God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, it shall be reaped. Stay with me just a second. Even as I am speaking, much is coming up in your heart. Much is coming up in the consciousness of men and women everywhere. All of the youth, all of the children, everyone should be thinking and pondering this message. The heart does not lie, even when the mind and the flesh does. Listen, don't call me. Don't write me. Don't don't send me a, a, a message that's negative. Because this message is for everyone. When you look in the mirror... That mess, this message is for you. It will not change because you do not like it. People and nations are reaped for judgment. We look in Joel chapter 3 and verse 13 says this. Put in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Come, go down for the vine press is full and the vats overflow for their wickedness is great. Believers ought to look deeply at self. It is a self-examination time to definitely look up within. If we want this to end, we need to look, begin to look within. Retreating to the prayer closet and to the secret place to emerge with new confidence and new hope that not only God can give, This type of suffering should draw you to a a new awareness of the following four important points. Now, you might want to write this down. 
because suffering always brings you to four things. It brings you to develop your character as a believer. It will also equip you for more effective service. Number three, it will draw you closer to Jesus Christ. And number four, prepare you for eternal life. This thing should develop your character. It should cause you to look within and determine if you want to win with Jesus or if you just want to be who you've always been. It will equip you for a more effective service. How many times do we look at what it is that we do and we say, you know what, I need more. I need more. I wish that I wish that the pastor, the leader, the apostle, the bishop would give me more. Well, first of all, we need to be equipped for the more. We need to be equipped for effective service. Effective service is the key to that sentence. Being effective at what it is you do and how you minister. This should draw you closer to Jesus Christ. I, I pray that it does. I pray that it removes all selfishness and all everything that that keeps you from coming in to to his care that keeps you on the outside looking in i pray that this message breaks down every wall and every barrier that stops you from looking in now it should prepare you for eternal life you know we forget about that place because uh, the eternal life that's what we're going to spend forever whether it's heaven or hell it's not always heaven for people. It's not always heaven. But this ought to prepare you for heaven. Because the heaven is the place where all Christians want to go. All Christians want to go to heaven. Some people want to go to heaven, but they don't want to prepare to get there. They want to just go. But there will be no train that takes you to this heavenly place that for people who are, are not prepared. Here are three areas that we are reaping. And these areas are always the same. This reaping will draw out the true heart of who you are truly worshiping. Is it the eternal God, Jesus, or some other idol God, including yourself? Some people are so in love with themselves. This is the generation of it. Number one, the area of reaping. Is the lust of the eyes. These things never change. The materialism, especially in this nation, I don't know. I haven't lived there very few. Uh, haven't been very many places. I've been. I've been to some, some nations. I've. Uh, I've uh, interacted with uh, international men and women of God. And the thing is, our nation could be reaping these things. Our materialism that overshadows Jesus the covetousness that's in our hearts and I remember I said could I'm not don't write me anything because your heart your heart will convict you wealth riches goods am I saying that wealth riches and goods are wrong I am not I'm saying how we handle them is wrong Anything that exalts itself over the mighty name of Jesus constitutes itself to another God. The second one is the pride of life. This is a huge one, a huge issue in our nation. And we're saying, well, you know, well, why are we facing with these things? Well, let's look. Let's take a really good look at this. The pride of life, selfishness, mm -mm. self-centeredness, mm. Mm -mm. this is the me generation arrogance self worth if you talk to many of the youth of this nation it's all about me it's all about what I want it's all about uh, this generation it's all about uh, their arrogance their self worth uh, we look at uh, the coronavirus and who who they're having the most problem with separating themselves and, and getting inside is the youth of this nation. 
the pride of life. But I'm not saying that uh, people that are 40 and over are not selfish. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're all guilty. Self-centered. Me. Generation. I'm going to get to a little bit more of that and in, in, uh, a little bit later uh, in this message. But I also want to talk about, uh, as we as we discuss this, I want to talk about the lust of the flesh. Uh, we don't ever want to talk about this because this is the most immoral. Uh, it, this is not an age. Mm -mm -mm. Immoral sex generation. Mm -hmm. We do not, not, no longer anymore do you hear teachings on fornication and, and um, abstaining. A lot of people are abstaining these days for themselves. They're no longer abstaining for Christ. Mm -hmm. And we have to look at it, uh, the lust of the flesh. The, it, it's, uh, no one ever looks at the lust of the flesh being power, being power hungry. And there's a lot of leadership that God has placed over people who are simply power hungry. They utilize control and selfishness to get people to follow them. Power hungry. And they utilize that power in their in their title and in their authority to, to uh, get people to do what it is they want them to do. Rape, incest. This is the lust of the flesh. A passionate, uh, the lust of the flesh. A passionate desire for something, for anything and everything. Sounds familiar to the United States of America. Uh, the sins of the nations we are being judged for. Listen, the sin of our nation. Now, like I said, I can't speak for your nation, but I can say these things about the United States of America. I, I can see that God would be judging us for, number one, a lack of respect for each other. We have a lack of respect, and, and we don't want to just talk about uh, the, race, the racial divide. We're going to talk about the lack of respect that leads to the sins, such as murder such as bad relationships, divorces, broken homes, low self-esteem, suicide, bullying. We have a genuine lack of respect that needs to needs to, that should draw us to our knees that would should draw us to to repentance. Children, here's number 2. Children no longer respect parents. We are faced with a generation of youth and children who are suffering from poor parenting. And I want to make a plea to the parents of this generation and say this, what was wrong with the way that your parents raised you and their parents raised them? At times, things may have seemed a little bit tougher, but in overall, we, we did okay. We did okay. But this generation, we are creating a whole generation of children who are who have a spirit of privilege. Their parents allowing things because they just simply want to be their child's friend. They do not want to parent. Parents longing to be friends and not to be, to be an authority have produced children who do not respect society, their homes. They don't respect themselves, nor do they respect their parents. Let me petition to all the parents. If you find yourself in that category, this is the day that you change. This is the day that you become a parent. If you don't really know how, there is no really rule books on parenting, but there is the one who made us, who created us, who you can petition, you can say, Lord, teach me how to parent. Lord, teach me what it is like to be a parent. Adults, 
no longer respect those in authority over them. It doesn't make any difference what your position may be. It could be they don't respect their pastors. People have very little respect for teachers, civic leaders, presidents. Oh, my God. Even though the word says to pray for those that are have, are in authority over you, we have so many people who are in direct opposition of the word and say, well, you know, God understands. Well, does he? Does he understand? Judges, police officers, play, pray for the policemen in this nation. Pray for those who are called out to patrol our streets each and every day. Let's look with me, please, to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 51 and 33. For thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor. When it is time to thresh her, yet a little while, and the time of her harvest will come. A threshing floor is a field that is walked on continuously until the harvest, so that the harvest may come forth with great power. The harvest comes forth after the field has been beat down until the harvest comes forth. Before I leave today, I do just have one small message for you. It's, it's about the judgment on the peoples and the nations. And I want to begin in uh, Genesis 6 